Rebecca, thank you for coming to this virtual thing that we are doing. Mensa, I know lockdown was rough. Personally, for me, you know, um, I did actually prefer the fact that the borders were closed, that we couldn't travel. Mensa, travel is cock expensive. And as a South African, uh, you think you're doing well. You think you're doing well. You look at your bank statements at the end of the year and you're like, Blixab, I'm doing well. But you forget, you are doing well in rands. There's a Musa difference. Like even the cheaper countries where it's, there's not the fucking euro, even those countries can get expensive. I remember my fiance and I, we went to the Philippines. Now, this is the thing when South Africans, when we go overseas, now, we get arrogant. And that's why I always tell people, don't worry, because you want to tell people, listen, when you go overseas as a South African, just stay humble. But you don't have to worry, man, so because South Africa will humble you. I mean, I felt very fancy going to the Philippines because here in South Africa, you know, I've got an Afrikaans accent. We get teased a lot for accent. But in the Philippines, I don't have a funny accent at all because they've got like a really thick accent, a really funny accent. Like they don't even have a V or a F sound in their alphabet. It doesn't exist. They replace it with a P. So there, if the time is uh, 4.45, you know, they all say 4.45. It's poor Porty Pipe. So I felt like very confident going to the Philippines. So lacquer, we walk around there. We met this Tani in the Philippines. Now, Filipina Tani, very rich, very wealthy Tani. And when she found out we were from South Africa, she started freaking out, right? She said, you know what? My favorite place in the world is in South Africa. And Mensa, she had been everywhere, now. New York. London, Milan, fucking Australia, okay? She had been everywhere, everywhere in the world, all the lack of places, but she said, my favorite place I've ever been to in the world is in South Africa. So I asked, oh, where? Expecting her to say Cape Town. That is sort of the most obvious place. Mm -hmm. She goes, no, Sun City. I kid you not, man. So she says to me, Sun Fucking city is my favorite place I've been to in the whole world. And I know you're sitting there at home thinking, ah, that's ridiculous, that's funny. Yeah, well, guess what? It actually fucked up my holiday. Because in the whole time, I'm there in the Philippines, one of the most beautiful places on earth, but then I kept comparing it to Sun City. And I felt like I wasted my money. You know why? Because Sun City won every single time i mean i'm walking around there on the beach standing there it's clear there's fish around swimming around your feet it's amazing but i'm standing there thinking you know what it could use some waves though sun city has a fucking valley of those things i mean we went to a bar one night there was like one slot machine you know i thought to myself okay oh cool like the philippines we can you can gamble a bit but it doesn't have that Sun City level of gambling. You know, that throw your life away <laughs> level of gambling that Sun City has. So eventually, we meet the Swiss French couple there in the Philippines now. And everyone knows the Swiss French. That is the fanciest of the people. So now at this stage, I'm feeling very arrogant. Now I'm like, yeah, like I. I am living the dream because we went out to a restaurant. It's like a fancy restaurant, Mensa. And I'm feeling now at this stage very arrogant. Yo, we were with these Swiss French people. They knew the chef oui, oui. of the restaurant. There's a long line. We skip past the line. We walk straight inside. I mean, the fanciest place growing up in Kempton Park, now, the fanciest place we went to is fucking Ocean Basket. You didn't just saw me pop into Ocean Basket willy nilly for a meal. It was for special occasions, birthdays, anniversaries. That's that's all you went to Ocean Basket for. There were other rules. You didn't just summer order a Fanta grape or a cream soda in Ocean Basket. Are you crazy? There were only two options of a cool drink. Grape tizer or apple tizer. Those were your options. So we go to this fancy place feeling as arrogant as ever. But this is why I say you don't have to humble yourself because South Africa will humble you. As we sitting there, I hear from the other side of the restaurant, I hear, Whoa, my fork, skulk, Poseidon out. 
the Swiss French couple, they're like, uh, Skulk, I, I think he's um, uh, calling you. I was like, he's a crazy person, just ignore him, okay? They're like, but he uh, knows your name. He is standing there still. Skulk! Skulk! Poseidon out. Where my fork in the fucking Philippine. I can't do gloony. They're like, Skulk, he knows your name. I was like, I look like a Skulk Poseidon out, okay? I look like, if you look at my face, you will think Skulk Beside Note, the name suits me so well that I just, I look like a Skulk Beside Note. This guy goes, Skulk! Skulk! What is Susan Sapus? Okay, now I know everyone's very confused right now. Susan Sapus is one of my oldest jokes. It's like some of my oldest material. It was like in the first two years of my career. It's basically a joke that was about, you know, how in Afrikaans we say a cut. This is the biggest difference that I didn't realize between Afrikaans and Dutch. Is there they call a cut a poos. That's what it's called, you know. And I was in Holland visiting people there that I knew. I was staying in a hotel, going through the TV channels, and there was like a kiddie show, you know. And you know, like in a typical kiddie show, that guy comes out at the beginning of all kiddie shows, looks a bit like me, has a mustache, looks like a pedophile. And then he comes out and he talks to the children and he's like, Hello, can I show you the Come help me look for Susanne Sapoos. Susanne Sapoos. Ben it under the tafel, Susanne Sapoos. Johan, Johan, where is Susanne Sapoos? Poor Johan is standing there. I don't know where Susanne Sapoos is. Susanne is running around in the background. I get my poos for lore. I get my poos for lore. I'm watching this thinking, how can this be a kiddie show? This should be on the seven o'clock news. There's a little girl out there that's lost a poos fork. We must get a search team together. Yerlikheid. So now I think to myself, Yerlikheid, I, I am ignoring this guy, but he's one of my true fans. He knows some of my first material, so I feel bad. I get up, I go to him, hey, hey, listen, hey, shut the fuck up. Hi, how are you? He's like, hello. I ask his name, I kid you not, his name is Fricky, who studies in Stellenbosch. I go all the way to the fucking Philippines on the other side of the world just to run in to a fucking fricky. But now, you know, I'm feeling bad that I ignored him, so I'm making a bit of small talk, you know, and I'm like, yeah, Yo, you know, how are you? How is it? Yeah, in the Philippines, he says he's a surfer, he's really loving it, that's why I came to this specific island, because there's lack of waves. He's like, yeah, it's lack of, and it's like, okay, cool, lack of. Then he says to me, yeah, but let's be honest, Skulk. It's not Sun City. I was like, we're my fork South Africa. Okay, fork that. Lacquer means that my name is Skull Poseidon. Thank you very much.